For the second consecutive year, Purdue big man Zach Eady was undeniably the best player in college basketball. The 7'4", 300-pound center dominated once again. So he's destined to be a top pick in the 2024 NBA draft, right? Well, not so fast, because with the NBA gravitating away from giants like Zach Eady, his growth as a prospect has NBA draft evaluators everywhere divided. His range in the draft is literally all over the board. But I think people are getting too hung up on what Zach Eady can't do and are forgetting that these types of players only come around once a generation. So let's talk about all of that in today's video, breaking down Zach Eady's strengths and weaknesses when it comes to the NBA game. And I'm going to finish up by telling you some of the top teams that need to have Eady in the must draft category on their board. Thanks for checking out the channel today, guys. Welcome to the Half Court Report. My name is Troy. Make sure you drop a like for the YouTube algorithm and hit that subscribe button too so you never miss another NBA video coming at you several times a week with some of the best basketball in terms of scoring the ball and is also a very, very, very effective rebounder. But on the other side, he has so far shown that he lacks the mobility required grab it at its highest point with his huge 7'9 wingspan. Not to mention, for a big man his size, he has plus hands to allow him to capitalize in the pick and roll as well as get easy dump off feeds in the dunker spot. And since he's such a big target and doesn't have hooves for hands like some big men, that makes it hard to throw a bad pass to Zach Eady. And it's even harder to strip the big man without fouling him. After all, in college, Zach Eady is going to the line a ton. Now that probably won't translate in the NBA, but other things about his game will. If he can overcome his projected defensive woes in the NBA, shooting that 70% from the foul line will allow him to close out games as needed at the next level without other teams resorting to that hack-a-shack strategy. Edie also possesses great touch and footwork around the paint that eliminates defenders with his great body positioning to stay of the opposing player, but he can also lay hard screens and understands angles that benefit his guards and their path to the rim. He also understands how to stay vertical at the hoop, and despite anchoring a defense at his size, he rarely gets into foul trouble. Aside from Edie's ability to protect the rim, he is a negative defender and only projects to get worse in the NBA because he is lacking the athletic ability and foot speed to keep up with shifty guards in a pick and roll heavy NBA scheme that has tons of perimeter scores. So it is tough to imagine Zach Eady being playable defensively in the NBA on a lot of nights. So he's going to have to find success as a drop coverage big and that will be the extent of his defensive prowess, at least for now. The lack of mobility is also going to limit the role that Zach can play at the NBA level because lumbering big men are not going to be able to play in transition or high-tempo offenses. From what we've seen at Purdue, he doesn't really run the floor in transition and only has 10 shot attempts in that setting this season. His slow shot release also doesn't encourage anyone that he's going to be able to space the floor at the next level, again, at least right now. So right now, anyway, he will be reduced to a specialty role at the next level. So that makes his draft value tough to judge if you're banking on him to be a huge piece of your team. Sam Vecini over at The Athletic has Zach Eady going number 30 to the Celtics in his latest mock. He says about Zach, Edie continues to be nothing short of the best player in college basketball yet again. He establishes position anywhere and everywhere on the court because of how big and strong he is, and he has touch around the rim. He's probably most underrated as a big in ball screen actions. He has a case as the best scorer in all of college hoops, consistently crushing guards trying to get through and rolling to the rim either in post-ups or easy buckets. Vecini goes on to say that he thinks Edie has grown defensively over his time at Purdue. He says he's a really good, impactful drop coverage defender, and around the basket, Edie consistently impacts the game and dissuades guards from trying to drive and finish with how much space he takes up. The questions, though, are obvious. 
He's a 7'4 super giant who doesn't move particularly well. So can he stop the corner from getting turned on him enough? Can he get back consistently in transition defense and an up and down NBA? But regardless, Vecini says that the feedback he's getting shows that Edie will be taken in the first round. And I agree with that. I think Edie's range is actually anywhere from the late lottery to the late first round. So let's look at some teams where I think he would actually be a pretty good fit. First off is the Miami Heat with their mid first round pick. Kevin O'Connor over at the ringer said, I am endlessly fascinated by the possibility of putting Zach Eady next to a rim protector like Bam Adebayo. He could provide the beef inside and Bam would provide two-way versatility. The fact that Bam has begun to shoot threes indicates that he could continue improving in that area. An interior force like Edie might be a perfect balance. I think another option for Zach Edie would be the New York Knicks. They have two picks in the 20s in the upcoming draft, and that is a team that, when healthy, can go far into the playoffs. They just need to fill out players along the margins. And with Isaiah Hartenstein's impending free agency, they might lose him and not have a capable backup for the often injured Mitchell Robinson. Zach Eady can be a cheap option, though, who can compete for minutes on day one. Of course, I wonder how Tom Thibodeau would address some of Eady's defensive concerns, but I love the idea of Zach Eady catching passes from the Knicks guards and setting screens to get their shooters open. I think another option for Zach Eady could be the Denver Nuggets with their late first round pick. I actually saw a Nuggets fan on Reddit who said right now it's pretty impossible for teams to win the Jokic minutes. So the strategy is to just stay close and dominate when he's on the bench. Edie would come into the league as a top 25 center who has good hands, good rim protection, good post defender, and he can rebound the ball. His main weakness is that he gets roasted in the high pick and roll in space, but the Nuggets are already designed and optimized to protect against this because that's Jokic's problem too. Maybe a good idea. And these next three teams could all use Edie for the same reason, so I'll loop them in together. The Spurs, the Thunder, and the Grizzlies all have elite rim protectors in Victor Wimbanyama, Chet Holmgren, and Jaron Jackson Jr., respectively. So just imagine what it would do pairing a big man like Edie with one of them. Edie could provide the inside play. His partner in the front court would provide the shooting and the defense. All three of those coaches are very creative too, so I think they'd be able to add creative layers to their team with Edie on the roster. Guys, that's what I think, but let me hear from you in the comments. Since you've watched this far, make sure you drop a like for the YouTube algorithm and hit that subscribe button too so you never miss another NBA video. Hey, it is draft time, and I am loving it. I even did a 30-pick first-round mock. Hey, where do I have Zach Eady listed? Make sure you check that out. And who do I have your favorite team picking, or where do I have some of the top players going? Give it a watch. Let me know what you think, and I will catch you next time on the Half Court Report. Have a great day.